What secret did you find out about someone that permanently changed the way you looked at them? In my early days as a lawyer I represented a sweet old widower with Parkinson's disease who was being sued by a local store for groceries his late wife had purchased on credit without ever paying for. I felt awful for him. And then, shortly before trial, I found out he'd done jail time for molesting children. That roller coaster was intense. There is an engineering professional at my workplace that likes to wear pricey articles of clothing. He even sports a Breitling wristwatch, priced from $3,000 to over $17,000, as his work time pace. Turns out that he and his wife are buried beneath a mountain of credit card debt, and while I do not look down my nose at him, I definitely view his attire and accessories differently knowing that fact. Dang. I felt like I was splurging when I bought my $150 watch. My wife's bestie confided in us that, while short of money, was moonlighting as a professional dominatrix. Until then we had thought that she was super vanilla. There was this one girl I'd known for a long time but wasn't massively close to who we all thought was being terribly controlled by her boyfriend. She would tell us that he decided when you was allowed to drink, when she was allowed to go out, what she was allowed to do etc. And that he hid things around the house, and that he had started to impose bedtimes for her and shout at her over what seemed like extremely minor things. We all thought he was awful and encouraged her to leave. Then she moved in with me and I realized she was extremely emotionally unstable and an alcoholic. Within months, I found myself wanting to do, or in some cases actually doing, all the things she said her controlling boyfriend had done. I remember one time after trying to remain patient with her for a while, she said one thing that was relatively minor and it was the last straw. I just snapped and screamed at her. I then got phone calls from all our mutual friends to talk about my behavior and anger management presumably as a result of the story being told back to them in a somewhat biased way. So, in a way, her secret changed my opinion of him. A friend I grew up started dating a guy and quickly got pregnant and married at 25 or so. One night, hanging out with her and her husband, he's like, did she ever tell you how we met? Apparently she was an escort since right after she turned 18. He was one of her johns, but they took a liking to one another. They've since been divorced. I had a seemingly innocent friend who normally kept to herself about her issues. Then one day she told us that she couldn't tell if she had a sore throat because she was sick or because she swallowed too much CM the other night. That was the only thing I associated her name with afterwards. When I got to uni at 18, I ran into a girl I was in school with when we were 11 stroke 12. We caught up regularly, and one day she told me, very nonchalantly, about how the previous night, she had engaged in sexual acts with a car full of guys in exchange for weed. I was a bit stunned, mainly because it's so easy to find weed in that town. The local park homeless alcoholic was once a professor of ancient history and dead languages and could speak and write in languages many of us would never even see. He used to teach at Trinity College until he was convicted for his wife's death. How she died or if he did it is a mystery to me but one person I've spoken to reckons it was an accident and another says they don't think he did it. Made me see the reality that no matter who you are you could end up in a personal heck. It only slightly changed my perception but I was about 9 stroke 10 when my dad told me why he and my mum split up. His exact words in a sad tone were she was seeing another man. He wouldn't tell me who it was. From now on every time an affair is mentioned I give a quick glance to my mum. She still doesn't know I know. Had a work friend back in the day. His wife was really mean to him. She always would tell me his kids hate him, even though they would run to the door excited when their daddy was home. And when she was really mad at him she would flip out and say that he fricked his sister and fricked a pig. He would just ignore her and not say anything back. Now I just ignored it because she would always try and make him look bad when she was mad at him. Well one night we were drinking and he was pretty drunk. His wife got mad and did it again but this time the heated exchange went like this. You fricked your sister and you fricked a pig once. Long pause. You know what frick you. That crap happened like 3 years ago. You need to just drop it and move on. I don't deserve to have it rubbed in my face all the time. Then I realized why she held such resentment towards him and I nope the frick out of there and never talk to them again. I feel so bad for their kids. It was a really dysfunctional situation for them. Luckily I heard they aren't together anymore. 
Haha, <laughs> that is not how I thought the story was going to end. There was a guy I worked with that was kinda handsy, but generally really nice all the time. I learned he was gay, but in the closet. It was then I started noticing how he treated everyone else, kinda douchy, he isn't handsy with anyone else. So all the positive attention was him trying to flirt, I guess. He was not very good at it. I had a conversation with him when he asked me to lunch. I had to awkwardly explain that I am married, etc. I feel like I may have accidentally led him on. I feel a little bad about it, but I wore my ring every day and I have pictures of my family on my desk. We are still on friendly terms and I introduced him to my circle of gay bro friends to help him acclimate to the culture. We became decent enough friends, but a lot of the flirt like behavior stopped. Very nice of you to do that, you're a good mate. Found out my best friend tried to rape a girl once and bragged about it to everyone but me. Also found out he held a knife to one of his ex's throats. There are many more things, but finding this out after a 10 plus year friendship, I ended it abruptly. So sorry dude. My grandma cheated on my grandpa when he was in the war. One of her kids isn't his. Everyone knows but no one talks about it. A family member's ex-wife of several years whom I was still close with asked me never to leave my daughter alone with my relative. She said that the reason they never had kids was that he confided when incredibly drunk that he had uncontrollable desires towards young, really young girls. He was upset and told her he felt he was evil and deserved to die. She asked him if he ever did anything and he said no and asked her to forgive him and asked God to make him better. Again he was like blackout intoxicated. This was surprising information. She didn't tell me in spite and actually still loves him very much. I haven't heard or seen evidence of grooming or any extra attention paid to any of the female children in my family. He could have just been really drunk and out of his mind but there is zero way I'm going to leave my daughter alone with him or let her out of my sight at family functions. I don't have evidence that what she said was true so I can't really do anything with the information other than be diligent. This is extremely disturbing. It's absolutely the safest decision that they don't have kids. Imagine having kids and then learning this. I just found out yesterday that my wife, 29, a teacher, started an affair with a student, 18 of hers about 2 months ago. We have been together for 10 years and married for 4. We have a 4 month old daughter and she threw it all away, career, marriage, and family. I had no idea anything was wrong until 6 days ago when I found her crying in bed and she told me she was depressed, no longer in love with me, and suicidal mostly because of my drinking habits. I took sole responsibility, swore off drinking, and had us signed up for marriage counseling the same day plus got her in contact with a postpartum depression group. Six days later she is sent to a crisis center by her school and I find out everything after the psychiatrist there makes her tell me the truth when I show up to bring her home. My life is so fricked right now that I can't even sleep and I'm holding a 4 month old baby trying not to cry while her cheating mother is 5 miles away in a hospital room. Safe to say I will never see my wife the same way again. As a kid I used to spend a lot of time playing computer games with my neighbor. One day I caught him pressing the caps lock key each time he wanted to capitalize a letter. Told him the shift key did the same job which led him to a 15 minute tirade about how the caps lock button was better. We've drifted apart since. Good, you don't need that crap in your life anyways. There was a woman, whom I considered my friend for many, many years. She had cancer, survived it, but it was still there and created many problems. She even appeared on TV shows as an advocate for cancer patients, did a lot of political activism, was very much a post-euthanasia, published some books. Then one fine day, through a series of coincidences, it turned out that her cancer had never existed. She had completely made it up. A big fat whopping lie. I would feel ashamed because I fell for it for so long. Except that a lot of other people fell for it too. Including professionals, doctors, nurses, priests. Needless to say, it ended that friendship. And it made me think a lot about how easily fooled we all are. Oh, by the way, she has died by now. Of cancer. I'm not kidding. Not the cancer she had made up, of course. Karma can be such a bee. Had a friend who hung out with two friends who were girls, and he was male. All went well according to him, 
but the girls told me he said it's getting hot, and proceeded to take off his shirt and masturbate and finish into a cup. Got all sweaty, then just left. I couldn't look this man in the eye ever again and cut off all contact. My old man used to hang nooses in the garage when I was very small as a way to manipulate my mother into staying with him. I'll kill myself if you leave. This as far back as 1990. She finally left him 7 years ago. When I found out how crap he'd been to her all this time I could never look at him the same way. He did not kill himself. Controlling. Cowardly narcissistic types who say that sort of crap very rarely do it to themselves. Sadly. Sorry your dad is that kind of person. There was this guy in my high school who was the typical big meathead football player bully. Picking fights. Playing mean spirited pranks. Super homophobic and misogynistic. He was something straight out of a teen movie. My senior year he ended up in my English class. At the end of the year we had to do senior statements which basically are speeches where you talk about a very painful life changing event you've been through. He got up and began to tell a heart wrenching story about how he and his brother have been abused by his father since they were children. He hates football and wishes he could do drama like he wants, but his father would never allow it. He acknowledged what and butthole he is and was besides himself for not knowing how to treat others. He quietly went back to his seat where he proceeded to cry quietly for the remainder of the class. His story radically changed my opinion of him. He was the first person who made me realize most people do deserve compassion. He still lives in my hometown and occasionally I find him at the bar downtown. He's a good guy, much quieter now, but hopefully pursuing something he loves because he deserves the happiness. I had a conversation with a classmate the other day about these kind of situations. Comma friend, you would think that being raised by narcissists or terrible parents would motivate someone to become the opposite when they grow up. Comma me, it's not that easy, it takes a strong person to overcome their own upbringing. My point is, kudos to that guy for changing when it's not that easy. In high school, I learned my best friend would contact most of the female friends I had, generally after I had a falling out or just some confrontation with them, and sexually harass them with, among other things, his overpowering foot fetish. I learned this in senior year when I started reconnecting with some of these friends and all of them had the same story. I haven't spoken to him since. Coming from a guy called comments on feet, that shoots a little bit overboard. My boyfriend years ago, told me he was abused as a kid, by his gay uncle, his actual uncle's partner, yet saw him as usual because he didn't want it to affect the family, and I had to be nice. A few months after he told me, he got drunk and in an argument with his dad yells it so everyone could hear. We broke up not long after, last I heard his dad was looking for blood and the ex-uncle was in jail. My GF was abused by some of her family members but she refuses to say anything about it as it will destroy the family. I hate going to her family social events because I then meet the people who abused and I have to be nice to them even though I want to strangle the frick out of them. I don't know how my GF does it as well. My friend in high school went to jail shortly after graduation for raping, beating, and nearly strangling his on again, off again girlfriend to death. Turns out it wasn't the first time or the first girl he did it to. Not necessarily a secret but, I was 8 years old, it was Christmas, and our family was over at a friend's acreage for Christmas Eve. I was sitting on my dad's lap, and I placed my hand up against his to compare size, and to my utter shock and horror, I noticed that my dad was missing a finger, his pinky finger. My mom and dad were confused, you never notice that? He's been missing his finger your entire life. No, I hadn't ever noticed it, and it was actually a bit too much to handle for an 8 year old at the time. I was absolutely devastated. In actuality, he lost his thumb while working on the oil rigs, and they transplanted his pinky finger to where his thumb would be, so that he still had some sort of grasping abilities. Pretty cool, but freaked me out so badly as a kid. Had an ex. He was one of those I am so gentle and kind you woo I love pastel colors and flower crowns you woo types, who went on to date a friend of mine. This friend goes on to tell me they broke up because he admitted to getting sexual with his dog on multiple occasions and asked if my friend wanted to watch him jack off that dog on Skype call. I was like, crap dude, I just broke up with him because he was freaking annoying. 
We are quite open about stuff in our family, so I've learned a lot of weird stuff about my father and my stepmother. But I think maybe the highlight was when my stepmother casually joked about my father's thing for MTV's Jeddy Jersey Shore. Apparently my dad watches the show when he can't sleep, all alone in the night. Well they are so boring they would send you to sleep. Someone I knew told me that he wants the age of consent lowered, and how pedophiles are discriminated against in today's society. Complete game changer. What the actual freak? My stepbrother. Stole my parents' identity, opened up credit cards and maxed them out. When my parents found out, they didn't prosecute because he would end up going to jail. They paid the credit cards off by making a settlement with the bank. If he shows up at Thanksgiving to my mom's house, dad is deceased. It's going to be dramatic. I don't understand how people are okay with doing crap like this. I feel bad if I look at someone the wrong way. Brother best friend and best man in my wedding all of a sudden moved to washington about a year and a half ago we have no ties there and neither does he and we just couldn't figure it out but whatever maybe he wants a new start then all of a sudden he moves back to the town my parents live in last thanksgiving the u.s marshals showed up to take him into custody and to send him back to washington he's facing trial next month on illegal touching of a minor amongst many other charges Definitely has changed the way I look at him. I have a guy friend who has always been quite popular with the ladies despite being quite an average looking guy. We lost touch for a few years, but within 24 hours of reconnecting again he told me that he secretly meets guys on gay dating apps, hires male trans escorts and absolutely loves cross dressing. Now the only time we ever really speak is when he wants my opinion on some lingerie or toys. Kinky, on a serious note, at least he's not afraid to share this side with you. Sibling set of cousins. My third cousins. Two sisters and a brother. The youngest sister. She is 31 this year. This happened in about 2009-ish. Was dating a mixed race guy. One parent black. The other white. I didn't realize how racist the family was. They told her to leave him immediately and when they found out she not only hadn't left him but was also now having sex with him. Her siblings beat her up while their father watched and they forced her onto a plane to the EU the next day. Black eye and all. Had her personal document seized by her sister and was basically a prisoner to her. I found out about a year later about this when our other cousin told me. I can never look at anyone in that family again the same way and it's so sad because as a kid I was very fond of them. The older sister had a coffee shop which my dad used to take us to a lot and I think that's where he met my stepmom. I am not sure if this is a secret now since my mom knows and I didn't tell her. Though at the time my cousin asked me to keep it quiet because it was top secret and very sensitive information. I don't know if any of the family know that I know about this as well. If any of them ever read this, you guys suck. Reddit makes me very depressed knowing there's horrible people out there in the world. Yet, it also makes me very thankful for my family and my upbringing. Some people have it really bad. My brother-in-law's mother is very sweet, kind and quite religious. A few months ago my brother-in-law, while drunk, confided in me that his mother had slept with his sister's husband. This had occurred years ago. The husband and sister have long since divorced but it completely shocked me that she would ever do that. I met a friend's new boyfriend who told me that he had spent time in jail for two DUIs. He got a DUI, and then he got another one, and the judge gave him jail time. He drank a lot, but when I met him he was at least very careful about not driving. But to be honest, I judged him for it. Pretty crappy to drive drunk. And how do you get one DUI and then not learn your lesson? It was something that affected the way I saw him. Fast forward 3 years, and now he is married to my friend. One night I am out with my friend, and she makes a comment about his sister. I had heard that he had a sister who died, but I never knew the details. Turns out she was a victim of a violent bloody murder by an ex-boyfriend and my friend's husband is the one who found her body. Walked into the house coming home from college for summer break and found her. The DUIs were in that first 6 months after her death. Should he have been driving drunk? No, of course not. But after I learned that I had so much compassion for him and the terrible pain he must have been going though. People deal with such terrible things, and they don't always deal with them well. There is a very shy girl at work, 
pretty but quiet and mousy, and I stumbled across her on our curvy. It made me see her in a new light. So you browse our curvy she posts their sounds like it is your time to shine. My best friend's brother-in-law kept getting sore throats for months. His normally soft-spoken mother, fed up by this time, screamed at him in front of a full house what do you expect if you keep eating that dirty pee. Later that day I found out that both he and his gf were dirt balls. He showered about once a month and she would only wash her face, hands, and feet. They are both very attractive, educated, athletic, church going people and all I can think of is her pee is so rotten it's contagious and this mother catches it with his mouth. Something backed up in my throat. As a kid, I found out my friend had lied to me in the whole school saying that he had trained real Pokemons and that he flies on the Nimbus cloud. It broke my heart as a kid, not because he lied but because I really wanted to fly on the Nimbus cloud. Rough childhood. My good friend was the result of his mother being raped. I'm one of very few people who know and I understand why he is so close to his mother yet is also so cynical towards society as a whole. I work at a trucking company. One day, the other girl who works in the office with me and I were talking about which drivers were our favorites. I mentioned this one kind of cantankerous old veteran who was cranky to 90% of the people but always a sweetheart to me. And the other girl's face went pale. She said you haven't googled his name then have you? I googled it, and found out he had been arrested for sodomy when he worked at a prison years ago, and that he had flown Nazi flags outside his house. I mean, I knew he was far right leaning politically, but, whoa, I'm still nice to the guy, but also low key kinda terrified of him. Similar situation, work at a trucking company, cleaning up HR files and noticed one didn't have background checks attached, ran one and oops. Found out the friendly and honestly kind of attractive driver is a rapist, victim under 12 years, can't stand the sight of him anymore and due to privacy issues, can't warn anyone. There's this really young Sikh kid who clerks an all night gas station nearby, where I buy my coffee. The other night, when I went in, nobody was at the counter and three people were waiting. One guy eventually started knocking random doors, and this kid came out. Looks like he's about 17 of the one room bathroom in the place. About a minute later, as I'm being served, this really, really old security guy came out of the same bathroom, glanced at me looking shifty, and then scurried off into the night. This town is gross. Sounds like the old security guard was down with the sickness. Someone I met while I was active duty. He was a wounded warrior eventually lost both of his legs. Everyone liked him, he got to do all sorts of cool things through the wounded warrior program. And everyone called him a hero. I somewhat recently learned that he was convicted of two counts of violent sexual assault of a child about 10 years ago. No matter what he did with his life after that, I can never see him as anything but a predator. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.